like, share and subscribe and ring that little bell. Ring that little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. So often asked the question, how are there fans of the current era doc of the Jodie Whittaker era of Doctor Who? Like, how are people who like Doctor Who actually like the rest of you know, people who like the rest of Doctor Who also like the Jodie Whittaker era? Uh, uh, and there are legitimate fans out there, right? There actually are. And I'm always interested in understanding a worldview which isn't mine, right? Which I can't really understand but that always does interest me so uh, uh i saw this article this morning which was a defense of the chris chibnall era of doctor who and it seems to be written by a guy i've read the first paragraph of it, it seems to be written by somebody you know normal right normal so yeah, i think uh, jody Whitaker fans are suffering in the same way that gay people are right now, now what do i mean by that uh we have gay people and we have the uh, uh queer lgbtq plus alliance right gay people generally speaking are people and they're reasonably normal right you know like most people are reasonably normal right uh, uh the lbgtq plus alliance uh, seems to be this totalitarian uh quasi-fascist organization that that hates you thinking and i think that they don't allow you to think and what they think changes often right uh uh, uh and they if you don't think those things you you're bad you're evil right you're, you're and corporations completely sign up to that as well which is very very odd but uh uh, uh you know it's it, it, so it's easy uh, <laughs> yeah uh, no it's easy to confuse, confuse a gay person for a queer person right uh, gay people normally quite normal right uh, uh, queer people are, are 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 you know totalitarians that what that want to control you and uh, you know uh, that that's what it seems to me right big big difference so uh, uh jody fans have the same problem in that there's a when jody when it came in uh cheers when came in a lot of toxic fandom came in with them like that was really where toxic fandom really really started i find toxic fandom i find toxicity cultural toxicity Normally it happens when there's ever any pushback whatsoever, right? When you push back against anything, then they go 100 cents harder. Uh, and, and again, these are like the worst people I've ever interacted with, like with no moral standards. There, there was no principles whatsoever. They just have sides, right? So, so if somebody does something on their side, it's fine. If somebody does something much more mild on the other side, because that's how they view the world, they're evil, right? And they'll scream and scream and scream and scream and scream. Honestly, you have no legitimacy without a single standard. You, you, you really, really don't. But anyway, I think normative fans of the Jodie Whittaker era uh, uh, get a bad name from the uh, uh, the toxic fans of the Jodie Whittaker era. So I can hear that the, the them say, "But what about the toxic haters of the Jodie Whittaker?" I haven't seen that much, really. I haven't seen that much. I, I've seen like very things that have been very disingenuously uh, termed as hate. Somebody on Facebook get it was so funny. Oh my god, it was so funny! So on Facebook yesterday, in this uh, uh, Doctor Thirteenth uh, Doctor fan uh, fan group, posted uh, a, a panel I was on like a year ago with like Nerdorotic and uh, 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 Tardis and a bunch of people, right? And it was it, it, the the caption was "Look at me, uh, who's who of hate?" And uh, they they had nicknames for everyone. Uh, uh, I was trying to work out where mine was. Apparently, I'm the Islamophobe. Okay, I mean, really, that's a little bit racist, isn't it? But uh, that doesn't matter because there's no shared principle. There's no principle. There's just sides. That's all there is, right? So again, as I said, I think uh, uh, regular Jodie Whittaker fans uh, uh, get a bad name from the toxic fans because the toxic fans are very loud and some are all you know all encompassing. But I've always wondered what <laughs> take you watch the Jodie Whittaker era. What is it that anybody who likes the rest of Doctor Who could possibly like, right? Uh, so I got this article this morning, uh, uh, which is a defense of the Christian era of Doctor Who. I'm intrigued to read it, right? I'm intrigued to read it. I, uh, I'll be you know, offering my commentary, my, uh, my, my response. And look, before I get into it, you're ever is allowed to like whatever they like, right? If you like the era, God bless you. Enjoy it. Enjoy it, you know? I actually think, uh, uh, while I don't, haven't found any of it watchable, it's got better as it's gone along, right? I think Flux was better than Woman Who Fell to Earth. I, I, I think it's got better as it's gone. I don't think any of it's watchable. I think the stuff that was closest to Doctor Who was the latest stuff, right? And I'm always, always do try and praise it wherever I can. You know, for example, the Cybermen design, excellent. The Sontaran design, really good, right? Right, that sort of stuff is great. You know, I like the uh, uh, the Dalek spaceship. That, that, a lot of the product design 
uh, uh, good. You know, I kind of like the weird arm control thingies for the cyber ships. Just in that it was innovative and something different. It felt very 60s-ish to me. I, got, I don't think it worked, but I like the experimentation of it. So I want to be positive wherever I can. Uh, 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 I'm not very positive about it. So, you know, as, as we're going to find out going through this article. Fine, before we hit me, can you hit the like button? <coughs> the share button and that subscribe button. They're, they're all fan dabby. Fan dabby double dozy. I'm, I'm very, very, very grateful for you uh, uh, all doing that. Uh, uh, I have a uh, email list called uh, called the Substack where you get informed when I put out content every day, and I don't want you missing a thing that I put out because let's face it, everything I put out is is awesome. I mean, I, listen, I, I review things, I review things, and in my professional judgment, uh, I. And everything I do is awesome. So you know uh, that, and that's just a fact, right? Go, uh, yeah, you get the facts checkers to check it. They'll go, yeah, 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 it's awesome. Uh, so you know, uh, subscribe my Substack. So my paid, uh, my paid Substack. Today is a day. Today and tomorrow, uh, you're getting, you're getting content. Do I have any? Oh, here it is. You're getting. Uh, uh, and you get all the back content as well, obviously. Getting two today, you're getting an issue of biblical Bible stories, eighth grade rational stories. I think tomorrow as well. I really want to catch up, right? I really, really want to catch. By the way, I'll show us a slide. I, I just uh, got this graphic novel about a month ago uh, by Howard Shaken called The Shadow. Because it was a sequel to this one, from the actual prequel to this one. This is the original one from 86, right? And I, used, I remember really liking it. So I read it, and it was... I didn't like it. It didn't really work for me. I'm like, what happened to him? It's not as good. Like, the other one was great. So I went back, and I read the original. It's also not very good. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> it's funny how the memory cheats. I just talked about it because it's right there. Anyway, Substack, uh, uh, sign up my Substack. That'll be Fan Dabby. Fan Dabby Double Dozy. Let's have a look at this article. So this is on Cosmic Circus, thecosmiccircus.com. They have a Patreon. Go sign up to it, right? Go sign up to it. Sign up to mine as well. Sign up to my uh, Substack. That'll be great. Uh, um... Yeah, yeah, it, but uh, uh, I really don't know anything about this website whatsoever, other than that they very much like the Jodie Whittaker era, and, and I'm hoping this is going to be a reasoned argument. So let, let's get into it. The defense of the Chris Chibnall era of Doctor Who. Uh, now that we're coming to the end of uh, Jodie Whittaker's run, I'm sorry, if you're a fan of the era, I can't stop, uh, uh, not take the piss out of it when I, when I received that name. Uh, uh, I thought it might be a really time to give the era props for, uh, the props it deserves. I think I've already done that in the opening monologue, right? I, any more than that? I, I mean, it. Let, before I get into my problems with it, let's go into, uh, let's, let, let's have the guy make the argument. In my opinion, the 13th Doctor era has been uh, quite good and solid despite negative audience re uh, reception. Now, I really want to say, negative audience reception shouldn't matter, right? It really genuinely should. And I, re I really mean it, all right? I really genuinely mean it. If you like it, you like it. It's okay. You know, I like a lot of crap. I do. Look, Downton Abbey. Downton Abbey is, is like predictable garbage. It really was. You knew what's going to happen all the time. Oh, Mr. Bates is arrested. Oh, he's torn apart from whatever name. Uh, what was that? Frogget? What was that last name? We remember. Uh, oh, now she's in prison. Oh, what's going to happen? Oh, and you know, everybody knows everything that's going to happen in Downton Abbey. No one's ever surprised. You knew Dan Steen was leaving. You knew, uh, uh, what's the name? The uh, uh, um, yeah, the three daughters. You had like the hot daughter, the the uh, the ugly daughter, and the super hot daughter. So they, yeah, the super hot daughter wanted to move off uh, uh, and do something else. So they killed her off. We all knew it was going to happen. And we all knew they were going to pray and replace her with another super hot daughter, which they did, which they did, uh, uh, who then went on to play Pamela Anderson, Pam and Tommy. One of my favorite things of the year, right? I, that's that's one of my favorite things. I love Pam and Tommy. Uh, uh, if you've got Disney Plus, uh, shame on you. I have it. I, I, I'm ashamed that I have it. But my wife and daughters, uh, they it's like a hypnotic control of them. They need their Disney Plus. Uh, 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 but that's on that. Anyway, so uh, don't worry about the audience reception, right? Uh, to give you some of my background on the subject, uh, subject matter before we go any further, I've been a long-time fan of Doctor Who for the last 12 years. I watched the classic series in its entirety, barring, of course, some of the missing episodes. I read a vast quantity of Doctor Who novels. This is a variety of big Finnish audio plays. So now I'm a super fan. So this is a genuine uh, uh, complaint that Jodie fans have, right? I think people on my side of the aisle... We'll call them not fans, right? you know, because again, for me, the Jodie Whittaker era was the opposite of Doctor Who. Uh, uh, it was the characterization of the character was the opposite of the character. I mean, absolutely opposite, uh, uh, and it was done really, really terribly. But let's uh, again, let's get let's hear his argument. 
Uh, on one hand, I understand why the 13th Doctor has been controversial. I don't think you do, right? Normally they put up straw man, article, uh, uh, straw, straw man arguments, but let's have a look. People being upset about the Timeless Child art, for instance, is understandable. Well, okay, this guy sounds reasonable, right? I, I Honestly, for me, it, it was by the time we got the Timeless Child, it wasn't Doctor Who. Like, at that point, I was, and I was ready to love it by the second season. I was ready to say, maybe they learnt the lessons of the first season and they're going to give it a better go. I really was. Go back and watch my channel. It's 100% it's there. Uh, I believe that overall, Christian, with Jodie Whittaker and the rest of the cast have delivered us a pretty solid batch of episodes. I, I, well, there we, we disagree. I I, I, uh, I found finding some of the worst episodes of Doctor Who ever, which I would never, ever re-watch. Re I, I know that because I've rewatched them to do really in-depth uh, 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 analysis and reviews. By the way, that's coming back. The reason I stopped doing that is because I got a copyright strike, uh, copyright claim against me by the BBC, and that goes away in twelve days if they can't substantiate it, which they can't substantiate it, right? Uh, 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 so then I'll go, I stopped on Spyfall Part One, but I, I went for that first season with a fine tooth comb, and I know it very, very, very well now. Uh, but he you liked it, right? And ones that I will likely rewatch with great fondness in future years. Okay, again, again, no one should make anybody feel ashamed for that, right? Everybody likes what you like. I mean, again, I, I like the Tomorrow People, and it's a bit shit. <laughs> I mean, if you love the Tomorrow, man, when I say it, Tomorrow People fans, they lose their shit. But it's a bit shit. Have you ever seen Jenna Kaya? Yeah, I mean, like the washing up liquid uh, 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 bottle uh, spaceships. Yeah, it's a bit shit. And I love it. I do love it. I mean, John's the pre, and and I love it, right? I love it. So, uh, uh, you know, I do. What can I tell you? It's just, it's just fun. Uh, Thirteen era feels like a return to Doctor Who's roots. Well, I, I don't think so. I mean, I think that was the intention. But okay, my 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 cornerstone problem is the characterize. It's two problems. It's the characterization of the Doctor. Uh, characterization of, and again, I've gone through this series very very closely. There is no moment of heroism. In, the, in in her first season. It's just assumed that we all know she's a hero because she's a doctor, right? No, you have to establish that, right? You have to establish the I am the doctor moment by be, by by experiencing uh, uh, um, heroism, by demonstrating he uh, yeah, uh, heroism. And I think that's the problem because I don't think uh, people like Chris Jimmer can really conceive of heroism because it's tied up with uh, normative traditional masculinity, which people like Chris Jimmer like to call Toxic masculinity, yeah. Uh, uh, so you know, it's 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 hard for them to understand heroism when 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 their whole raison d'etre of life says there are no heroes, right? No, the, the, you know, it is is anti heroic. Uh, uh, but anyway, she's uh, oftentimes had no idea what's going on, right? For me, the Doctor needs to be insanely clever, knows everything, right? Or, may, or is he uh, an incredibly, or at least knows enough to improvise and change uh, uh, and come up with a plan on uh, on the fly. This Doctor, uh, okay, she never knows what's going. What? Ooh, ah, uh, that's impossible. That should. Oh, not. I mean, it, it never, ever, ever really has a clue what uh, uh, what's happening. And I say, go back and watch it for yourself. Uh, if you can find it instances where she does, that's great. But like, and her solutions are insane, right? A are absolutely insane. Like, oh no, we can't let the spiders. Uh, 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 we can't kill the spiders. That's cruel. These giant spiders. But we can let them suffocate to death horribly, right? Oh, oh, oh yeah, we can. Uh, and it's all Donald Trump's fault. I, I, I mean, uh, 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 it's it's just weird. It's just really, really weird. Uh, again, never has a clue what's going on. Uh, never is uh, an agent of change. Never is. Uh, uh, I mean, it's basically just a bus driver for for her fam. That's all it is. She's basically a bus driver for the fam and not much else, right? That that's essentially what this doctor is. Um, and also, they're not very moral, right? Again, I think, and I think it's because Christian doesn't understand moral uh, uh, more, uh, morality. He seems like a uh, a, a Twitterite, if you want, like, you know, a, a Twitterati person, a and the Twitterati people don't have principles; they have sides, right? So it's uh, if if somebody on your side does something like call for violence, like let's burn it down and fight like hell, then 
they're uh, uh, expressing their legitimate uh, uh, um, uh, peaceful uh, uh, means to peacefully protest, even when those protests do get very, very violent. But then if somebody on the other side says, you're going to have to fight like hell, oh, he's trying to destroy the world, right? He's trying to destroy the government. You've got to have a single standard, right? You've got to have a single... And you can't have morality without that, right? So I, this doctor... Uh, um, is just an immoral idiot, and I I don't like that that much, right? Uh, immoral idiot that you that thinks you should uh, look at them as a hero when they've never done anything heroic, right? Nothing to do with the gender. I would hate this if they if it was a male playing it as well, right? I, I it's uh, uh, I mean I think the reason that that it what has been so awful is because they've been too concerned about forwarding sociological, ideological, political messages. Uh, uh, which are normally moronic, right? <laughs> which are normally absolutely moronic, uh, uh, and they take up the the bandwidth of the writers to uh, uh, try and deliver the, the uh, this messaging, and it's always at the expense of uh, storytelling. Okay, so I don't think that was the roots of Doctor Who, but the era feels like a return to Doctor Who's roots. Back in the sixties, when the show first premiered, Doctor Who was marketed as, a, as an educational family show. I mean, you do understand it's like back in the sixties was what sixty years ago. Back in the 60s was when being gay was illegal, right? And women had to use pseudonyms to get, get uh, uh, to be writers in TV. And that was in the, in, in the 70s. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, why would you want to go back to that? I thought you you, got, you all hated that. But anyway, back in the 60s show, it was an educational family show. Uh, the episodes would alternate between sci-fi episodes set in the far future that taught about some sort of scientific concept and historical episodes that taught about real historical uh, time period. Now, I think uh, uh, Russell D. Davis' revival uh, very much did that, you know, uh, not alternating week to week, but had those two poles of the show. Uh, I don't think um, they've delivered that at all with, with the Whitaker era, right? Uh, the the historical episodes that taught about real historical period, well, obviously the messaging style and tone that, that series has shifted greatly o over the uh, next six decades. The spirit of exploring bizarre plants, encountering historical figures, and fostering a sense of wonder and optimism about the universe remained fairly constant. Well, I found that fairly absent, right, from the Whitaker era, right? I found it... I don't think... You know, I, bottom line is, and, and this is another problem, I just don't think Whitaker... Uh, can imagine the character of the Doctor being a real character. To her, it's kind of like a Teletubby, it's children's TV, it doesn't matter. She can go, oh, wait me little uh, uh, Sonic screwdriver. And he's like, well, there's no way of doing it like a, a, a definitive way. It's, it's just a magic wand, and that's how she treats it. I think that's how she sees it. I just don't think she sees the reality in the role. I haven't seen that in her performance at all, right? Uh, uh, I think she's probably a good enough actress when it's a, a roles that she can match it, but they they seem to be wives and girlfriends, right? Oh, why are we only cast as wives and girlfriends? Because it's the only thing you have the bloody ability to do, apparently. Uh, so I don't, I never got any sense of wonder or optimism, right? Uh, uh, I, like, if you could actually define those and tell me where they are, I would love to see. I, I just don't see it. Uh, at the time that Stephen Moffat era was going on, uh, fourteen to sixteen. Uh, you know, he was in the middle of the uh, classic Who, uh, 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 classic Who watch as well, and he was surprised despite the questionable special effects and general ca campiness. I found myself far more drawn into the narrative of the story they were telling back in the seventies and eighties than the uh, <laughs> current ongoing episodes. Well, listen, I mean, back in the back in the day, you had to have story, right? Doctor Who was always known as like the, the 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 show with cheap production values with incredible acting and writing, right? That's what it was in the seventies and eighties, uh, uh, and it was yeah, stunning quality, right? Let's start with the eighties. Let's be fair, uh, um, but then again, you had Nicola Bryant squeezed into spandex, so you can pretty much forgive anything. And I'm loving my season twenty two. Oh my god, Benjus on Varos with that uh, uh, HD and the ability to pause and Perry's uh, wonderful turquoise outfit has bought me. Uh, 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 it brought me out into a sweat more than once, let me tell you. Uh, 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 best you don't know. Best you don't know. Um, uh, to me, Doctor Who was about their sense of exploration and optimism about the universe, not saving the entire cosmos from a new nonsense uh, uh, every other episode. Fair, that's a fair criticism. I agree with you there, right? I do agree. Like the, uh, you know, I loved uh, uh, Kinder, for example. It was a little story set on a single planet with, with like, 
essentially one tribe of it apparently living on it. Uh, 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 it's it, The lower stake stuff is fabulous, right? I like the lower stake stuff. For that reason, season 11 was a major breath of fresh air for me. Uh, barring one or two of the wolf, uh, weaker levels, <coughs> arachnids in the UK, I actually found myself quite impressed with the overall quality of the season. I really didn't. Right? I really, really, really didn't. The writing I found was just abysmal. Uh, uh, it was the, the Rosa episode was was diabolical, right? The, uh, there's so many uh, um, plot holes in that. I, 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 I mean, again, go watch my recap of it. The, the, you know, the alien had no motivation. The idea that uh, racism would, would, uh, would remain in the 1950s levels. Uh, uh, for another what fifty thousand years, if Rosa Parks wasn't moved off the bus, uh, uh, made to get give up, I, I find ludicrous, right? I find absolutely ludicrous. Uh, I, I, there was no motivation for the villain whatsoever, and and, and the Doctor kept making stupid, idiotic leaps. Like I, I just it, it, everything was to shoehorn in. Oh look, here's Rosa Parks. Oh look, here's Martin Luther King. Uh, uh, look at us, we're white people and we're so good. We like we 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 we're highlighting black people. Look how good us, us white people are. And that's a vibe I got from it, and it really I found it quite nauseous, right? Uh each episode felt straightforward, uh, actually enjoyable, and retained the original spirit of the show uh all the way back from the 1960s. I again I disagree. I really strongly disagree because the characterization of the doctor was so weak. Uh I think that really, really, really missed it. Uh, there was an excellent blend of space exploration and historical facts from the Ghost Monument. Ghost Monument, I like the opening of. Uh, uh, and I'll still hopefully it was going to be good then, right? Uh, I think Ghost Monument is probably one of the best episodes in that first season. Again, I can't rewatch any of them. I well, I can, but I just choose not to because I don't like it. Uh, with its strange and hostile setting to Rosa, and it's generally a heartfelt tribute to Rosa Parks. It really wasn't a heartfelt tribute to Rosa Parks. It was a heartfelt tribute to uh, the greatness of the white saviour, Chris Chibnall. Uh, and much more so. Really, really much, much more so. And it was just, it was a, it was a, it was a threadbare plot f full of plot holes for a, uh, to put forward an ideological uh, uh, point, right? I, I, I'm not uh, diminishing Martin Luther King, uh, sorry, Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King. He worked hard for those, those titles. I should bloody give him those titles. Or Rosa Parks. I'm not diminishing them at all. The reality of them, uh, uh, I think they were, were incredible people. They did incredible things. I think they were uh, horribly used to make Chris Chibnall sit, uh, feel good about himself. And so the and also to provide some kind of an umbrella for criticism. Uh, said, what? You don't like Rosa? You must be a wastest. No, I don't like tokenism. I don't like turning people into tokens. I think I find that disgusting. To Kablam with the parody in the Amazon Corporation, each episode felt entertaining yet uh, had genuine heart. Had no genuine heart. That's uh, that was the thing. Because again, Whitaker's uh, performance was just absent. And then the season finale, the Battle of uh, Ranscott of Coloss rolled around, and there was no huge uh, universe-ending threat. Well, weren't they uh, like super powerful aliens there who could have ended the universe? Uh, and they bring back the Tim Sh Tim Shaw. Who, they were supposed to be a big, scary, big bad, but nobody cared because it wasn't very good. Uh, uh, just fighting another monster in space, which turned uh, a number of long, convoluted, and uh, confusing. Uh, uh, turned, yeah, which uh, after a longer uh, a number of long, co uh, convoluted, and confusing season finales was honestly very comforting. No, yeah, you know, I have to tell you, I would recommend Star Trek Strange New Worlds because for for a, a good example of, of, of what this person's saying, which is, I, I got this from your boy Zach's channel and he's 100% right, uh, in my opinion. Star Trek Stra uh, Strange New Worlds is um, uh, uh, very, very uh, reasonably simplistic old school sci-fi, like 1950s, 60s sci-fi, got that feel to it. Uh, uh, and it's kind of like Star Trek having a stroke and learning to walk again, right? Uh, this wasn't that at all. These were just kind of like boring stories that didn't engage you, which were busy uh, preaching at you. Uh, way too much. Way, 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 way too much. Uh, on top of that, I really like Jodie Whittaker as a doctor. Well, again, everybody can like whatever they like. I found her performance just dire. Absolutely dire. I think the only reason she was hired is because she has a vagina. Right, all right, and 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 if only they knew uh, in 2022, you don't need a vagina to be a, be a woman anymore, right? If only they knew that was coming, uh, uh, maybe maybe they would have hired her. Uh, uh, who knows what dares to dream? Um, uh, 
Uh, but I think it was it. Uh, she doesn't have quite the dis uh, a distinctive personality as some of her previous incarnations of the Time Lord because she doesn't understand the character. Like it seems that she does, and I'm not lambasting this guy, right? If you like it, it's fine. It's fine to like it. I don't think she understands the character, uh, and that explains why she's played it in such a bizarre way, right? <laughs> if you ever saw that that last season of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Uh, uh, Larry David, uh, the George Costanza uh, uh, stand-in for it, is uh, um, blackmailed into the, uh, getting this woman onto a TV show that he's creating, and she's literally the worst actress of all time. It's not that far off. You should watch that season. It's not that far off Jodie Whittaker. It really isn't doing Doctor Who. Also on HBO Max, so yeah. <laughs> you, could AB, you could AB it there. Uh, uh, but I think, uh, given her genuine lovely performance as a character, I think it's been awful. Right, again, no heroic uh, heroism whatsoever. Just this arrogant assumption that she's heroic and doesn't really work. I mean, also, like, Yaz is the best as ever. We never see it. We told it a lot. We never see it. And honestly, that was really one of the big problems with the, with the Kenobi sh show. It's uh, like... We never saw Obi-Wan Kenobi and uh, uh, Anakin Skywalker being friends, right? We just kept telling, oh, we're the best friends as ever. We're the best. But no, happened the absolutely uh, series is, well, uh, movie two and three. And yeah, I know the Clone Wars, but that didn't really do that much either to show their friendship. I mean, I'm sorry. What do you want me to tell you? Of course, leading into season 12, the tone of the series shifted a little. There was a... A bit more darkness, a bit more edge. This season had a few more weak entries to offer, most notably the dreadful Orphan 55 and the Dull Praxis. Orphan 55 is where, where, where I would have been out, right? If I wasn't reviewing, I would have been out and like, leave me alone. Uh, but other than those, I found myself enjoying most of these episodes uh, very thoroughly. Good for you. I mean, Nikolai Tesla's Night of Terror was one of the most boring uh, uh, hours of my entire life. And what's the one? Can you hear me? Oh, God. Again, this goes back to heroism, right? This doctor is not heroic, right? Graham says, I'm worried my cat is coming back. Can you inspire me? Eek, you thought I feel socially awkward. And I understand Chris Chibnall feels socially awkward and he doesn't have the right thing to say a lot of the time. Chris Chibnall, you're not the doctor. The doctor's a hero. The doctor says things to inspire people, to lift people up. Not go, oh, it's okay to be awful. It's okay not to inspire anybody. I'm just going to go over here and look after myself, Eek, you thought. Yeah, that that doesn't really work, right? That does not really work. Uh, that season, of course, was building up to the resolution of the Timeless Child arc, uh, which is la which is largely disliked by fans because it doesn't bloody work, right? And I know you're desperate to say, not you, maybe you seem reasonably sane, they're desperate to say that, oh, look, this was foreshadowed in the brain of Morbius. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Uh, 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 if you haven't heard this before, uh, Discontinuity Guide had the best explanation for who those mysterious faces were. You know, Robert Holmes in a wig. Is that the Doctor? No, apparently uh, uh, the theory is that was a, a fake incarnation conjured by the fourth Doctor to win the mind-bending tournament. Works a lot better, doesn't it, than saying, oh yeah, Doctor's been around for billions of years. And, and you know, the biggest problem with the Tyler's Child are well, there's several problems. I mean, continuity-wise, it fails completely. But the motivations behind it seem to be very, very transparent. The motivation is to make the Doctor less white and less male, right? Because idiots can't relate to a character unless they see a mirror image of themselves. It's just insane. Absolutely insane way of look, uh, looking at the world. I mean... Uh, 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 people of uh, people of all different types who feel like an outsider, who feel a little bit more cleverer than than the average kids in school, who have a bit of a different way of looking at the world. You know, those sort of kids, they all felt kinship with the doctor, regardless of his skin color, regardless of you know, regardless of his sex, regardless of his gender. Right? And, and uh, yeah, the person I always keep going back to is uh, 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 Don Martin, who's a uh, Reasonally prominent fan and and a, a, a and a cosplay. He's got he's got a fan fan film. I you know I really anyway, I really want to watch. But uh, uh, I love his cosplay, right? I genuinely genuinely love his. I'm a fan of his cosplay because it's not just making costumes, right? It's making the character, which means to me, he, when he saw Colin Baker, right, he he, he didn't see the superficial thing. Oh, he's got white and he's a uh, uh, white person. No, he saw. The, the character traits that he related to, right? Me too. I'm a fat Jew. He's a black guy. You know, none of us are like you. <laughs> uh, uh, your average Christian white bloke, COV white bloke from England. But we all related. 
we all related to Doctor Who, right? Because we, you know, uh, 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 we see deeper than that, right? It, it, it just seeing something on, on the absolute surface uh, is is disgraceful, absolutely disgraceful. Um, uh, so yeah, that's basically. I think that's my biggest problem with the Timeless Child. So anyway, it just continues. It doesn't work in any way, shape, or form, uh, and then it doesn't even work internally, right? It uh, like it, it 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 it's just confusing and it makes no sense it's not mystery right right i, I mean it's suddenly if one day uh, uh superman wakes up and he's got red hair and they never mention it right and, and, they, and that's not a mystery that's a screw up right you know uh, uh, uh yeah if some if somebody like i don't know uh, uh wants to do a james bond movie and and, and have him go home to his parents at, at, at the end of the movie uh, or a, during the movie, right? Go and visit his parents. That's not adding a layer of mystery to it. That's ignoring the established continuity and making it not make sense. That's essentially the Timeless Child arc. But I think, that, uh, look, I, I find the Timeless Child arc convenient in that uh, it made this era of Doctor Who, which uh, uh, I feel is not Doctor Who, the opposite, not just not Doctor Who, the opposite of Doctor Who, uh, uh, generally reviled by, by the general public too. So, uh, uh, you know, I'll take the win where, where I can get it, right? I totally will. Uh, I have a slightly different take on the subject, though. The Tiny's Child is actually pretty good. Listen, everyone's allowed to like what they like. What they like, right? Everyone's allowed to like what they like. Okay, I admit it. I'm not sure why Christian would chose to attempt to completely rewrite a canon law Doctor Who. I just told you why. To make the character less white and less male, right? Because he's an idiot. Uh, other than it's used to incorporate the Morbius Doctors into canon. No, 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 no. Uh, but I really don't think the big revelation is nearly as atrocious as some uh, as some teams are think. Okay, let's find out why. One of the primary criticisms I've heard of the story arc is it disrespects William Hartnell's legacy as the first Doctor. I've never really understood this take. But what, I understand what's not a time. So, okay, let's see. I mean, it's not just devaluing William Hartnell's role. It's devaluing the entire... It's diluting... And, and by when you dilute something, you devalue it. It's diluting the entirety of Doctor Who. Right, it's uh, uh, making it weak. <laughs> just making it, yeah. You know, if 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 the Doctor has infinite lives, uh, uh, then anybody can be the Doctor. Then the Doctor isn't special, right? The Doctor has to be different. Has to be that. That's what specialness is, right? Uh, there's a, uh, William Hartnell still played the first Doctor. Uh, even from an in-universe perspective, as, uh, as other incarnations existed before him, presumably the Doctor's memories that were erased by the division between the first and the previous incarnations. Therefore, he truly believed himself to be the first Doctor, but he was wrong. His decision and personality were entirely his own and not predestined, but he's still not the first Doctor anymore, right? It's, I mean, like, in fact, he's one of a bazillion. He's less important. As, as are all of them. They're less important because there's just a gazillion more of them now. Um, the point, uh, uh, this points to another criticism which you hear a lot, which the Timeless Charles implies the Doctor is somehow uh, a mythical chosen one. Well, it is. That's <laughs> no other way of saying it. Uh, uh, even more than they uh, already were, apparently. And it takes away from the uh, agency and power of the character. But again, I would argue uh, uh, up to this point, the Doctor believed that life began with the first Doctor and therefore the choices to steal the TARDIS and to run away the universe were entirely their own choices, not influenced by any previous Doctor. What's the, what's the difference if they're influenced by previous Doctors? I don't understand why you think that's a, uh, uh, a factor. Yeah, it's not they were influenced by any Doctor. Again, if you have one, it's unique. If you have a thousand, it's less unique. Right? That's, that's why. It's just, again, dilution uh, 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 equals something being less special. Ultimately, I think the Tiny's Child plot twist can lead to some pretty uh, positive stuff in the future. It could do, but it's going to be forgotten forever. I, I mean, the, the, the rumor I heard yesterday was that uh, uh, Jodie Whittaker uh, uh, regenerates uh, face to white and we hear a laugher. Uh, laugher? We hear laughter uh, 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 at the end of it. So kind of like Blake Seven, you know? Which I can see him ripping off. Um, yeah, and so this era is just going to be gone. I mean, yeah, yeah it, no one's ever seeing it again. It, it, it really, I, I don't doubt anyone's ever going to see Jodie Whittaker as a Doctor. Ultimately, I think the Tiny Child plot is going yeah, to lead some pretty uh, It opens up the show for more storytelling possibilities. Really? Okay, how was it closed off to storytelling possibilities? 
You know, right now, uh, up until now, we've been able to tell pretty much any story at all. Any setting, any story, any genre, go anywhere, anywhere in time, anywhere in space. I mean, look, do you remember that great Matt Smith uh, uh, trailer for his first season? Uh, talk to anyone. Anywhere, yeah, we, well, anywhere you want, anywhere in time, anywhere, anywhere in space. The only condition has got to be awesome. <laughs> Fantastic, right? I love that, right? I don't understand. How was it closed off before? It wasn't. It wasn't. And so now, and, and yeah, what have they done with this stunning and brave new uh, uh, story possibilities they open up? They made bog standard 2022 sci-fi. Now the Doctor's a snarling black woman with a gun. I, I, how many times do I see it? How many times do I see it? And how many times is it boring? 100%. Do I mind there being a black woman on TV with a gun? No, I don't. Do I mind uh, uh, black people being tokenized on TV? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Right? That's why they're not characters. Because they're just tokens. They're, uh, like, they're little purse puppets. People like Chris Jim and Jodie Whittaker hold up. Look at me. I like the blacks. Look at me like the blacks. Ooh, ooh. And it's so disgusting. Right? It's so I'm such a white saviour. For example, where does the Doctor truly come from? Again, it makes it more boring. All this stuff just makes it a lot more boring. What have the adventures of the previous Doctor's uh, unseen be like? I don't care. Right? I mean, honestly, again, again, I, this is a whole new continuity shoehorned in. And, and it's a different show, a different... Like, I'm not really that interested in it. It's It doesn't have any charm, right? For me, it just doesn't have any charm. Doesn't, it doesn't, it's not something that interests me at all. These are questions that I... that I've, Again, if it wasn't for the very, very transparently racist need to dilute the whiteness and the maleness of the Doctor... Uh, um, I would probably be more open to. I'm just not. I'm not interested in any of these questions. There's a whole universal policy that's been opened up uh, by the story. And again, uh, 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 why did we need them? It seemed to be. I mean, it seems to me there are plenty of really good stories that we could have told. Um, you know, like limitless good story. But this is Chris Chibnall, right? Why did he say he stopped doing Christmas specials? Oh, I can't really have any ideas for Christmas. No, it's because you hate Christmas because it has a biblical origin. Like, you hate everything with a biblical origin, which is basically where I think everything really boils down to. Um, and again, I admit the revelation does conflict a lot with established canon. Yes. And we're going to see how the, uh, the messiness of the law... Uh, gets dealt with by, by the next era of the show. They're going to forget it and retcon it away. It's gone. However, Doctor has always been, had a mess, uh, mess with canon. Not really. Up until uh, 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 Mordor and Undead, there was really no problem whatsoever. I mean, yeah, little things here and there. Uh, but, you know, you can find a way, find ways around that. And the reason we had Mordor and Undead, it was a good story, right? Bottom line, it was a good story. And the reason they, that it conflicted, nobody really noticed, is because it was written for, for in Chesterton. It wasn't written for the Brigadier, right? So, but, uh, you yeah, know, it was like, oh, let's get the Brigadier. And it said, okay, and it worked. And it worked, and it was a good story. Uh, uh, and, and there are ways ways around it, but like it's not it. This isn't as central as to like uh, to what Doctor Who is as what Doctor Who is, right? This was a, 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 an interesting, weird temporal anomaly, which I, you can imagine getting in Doctor Who. Uh, Mess with Cannon in the sixties, seventies, eighties. Get over it. Modern series uh, fans can look past it too. We're going to look past it and never see it again. But what about Flux? Ah, oh, Flux. I think the Flux was the best thing they've done. I really do. Uh, I am well aware the fuck, uh, Flux feels a lot moffity than the rest of the Chimney area. Yeah, he was ripping off from them now. Again, it seems to be desperate uh, 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 gear changes between seasons when they realize how much they failed. Uh, I, I, I also, often, honestly, I think the reduced uh, uh, episode count and the... Uh, uh, you know, the restrictions that COVID put on it only made it better. I really, really do. Really genuinely do. Uh, the rest of uh, the children here, for, uh, for a season-long universe-threatening art to return uh, to the return of the Weeping Angels. I hate what they did with the Weeping Angels. Right? Yeah, the Weeping Angels are scary, and that episode was reasonably, uh, reasonably scary because it it's very superficial, right? What were the Ve Weeping Angels? The object like heavies, like boring heavies. All the mystery was gone. All the wonder of them is gone. They're just dull. And that cliffhanger, which is good, where Jodie turns into a weeping angel, that was good. Like all the cliffhangers, very boring, instantaneous resolutions. Uh, but, uh, uh, we, we, uh, Flux Throat feels very much like a story art that uh, Moffat would have written. No, it, it feels like a karaoke. 
of a story that Moffat uh, would would have written. I actually enjoy Flux pretty well. I like Carvinista, right? I like bits of it to make it seem more like the Tomorrow People, right? Which, as I said, it was awful, but yeah, it was kind of fun. Uh, it was good for what it was, especially considering it was filmed during the height of the COVID pandemic. I think it was better than anything they did in their first season. I really genuinely do. I think it, it, it was much better, much more fun. To me, it seems somewhat close to what they are aiming for with season 24, right? Uh, uh, just they had the money to do it. Uh, and they had a rough idea of what they were doing. Uh, I did actually appreciate the uh, return of lots of villains, introducing new characters, and the fact it felt appropriately uh, epic uh, final season for the th uh, 13. Um, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, uh, of course, a number of plot threads were left unresolved because it doesn't matter. Again, one of my big problems I have with this era is the lack of professionalism in the writing. These scripts just don't hold together they're not professional they, they are they are sub-professional and and they're all they're there for is to give sociological ideological uh, political points this is why when Piers Wenger when asked how's Doctor Who's doing when it was in the middle of the ratings crash right you know we had ratings well up here well let me start up here and then, you know, the Widow Gator, they went well, that way. So about in the middle, when it was like very, very clear what was happening. How do I do this? I'm trying to do it backwards. Uh, no, this way, right? No, no, no. Ha. Ah, oh, here we go. There we go. When it was like, the it was like there, when they were about at this point, and it was very clear which way they were going. They said, yeah, how do you think Doctor Who's going? He said, no, editorially, it's the best it's ever been. Yes, because it's just spouting idiot uh, idea after idiot idea. It's just a platform. Yeah, yeah. No, but it wasn't working very well, was it? Uh, uh, and then they have the most stupid uh, response. Oh, Netflix. Oh, ne so why is Netflix uh, uh, firing all, all their staff right now? Oh, uh, it's just stupidity. Uh, for instance, uh, well, is a lot of the universe destroyed right now? Will the Doctor ever be able to fix that? Hopefully these issues will be addressed in the centenary special later this year. Uh, uh, maybe. Who cares? Uh, overall, though, Flux is imperfect, but again, I still found it thoroughly enjoyable. I don't find it thoroughly enjoyable. Um, you, the one director on it was pretty good. Magnus Stone, I think, whatever his name was. Uh, uh, uh his episodes, they rattled, mo they, they moved quick enough that you didn't realize how, how poorly they were put together. Like, how poorly they were written. And that's why they moved so quickly, and so much was going on. Uh, uh, to distract from the lack of writing ability, which, you know, Chris General just hasn't been able to write a good, solid story. I, and I appreciate you said, oh, I prefer the simple storytelling. It wasn't very good storytelling. It wasn't, it, he can't write a simple story, right? And, and I think that's really the bottom line. It's just an amazing lack of talent being hidden behind social agenda points. Uh, overall, that flags are perfect. Looking forward to the Doctor Who's future. We all are. At last, we all are. Despite some negative public reception of, of the 13th Doctor, I find myself hopeful the future of Doctor uh, future of Doctor. Yes, I'm excited anyway. Wrap right next uh, Rusty Davis here. Why do you think he came back? Be okay, again, the rumor is that uh, 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 Doctor is mortally wounded by the Master, and he says goodbye to Yaz and says goodbye to Graham. Oh no, Graham, uh, whatever his name is. Uh, Dan, uh, uh, John Bishop, yeah, says goodbye to Joe. Uh, 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 and then she goes uh, to a restored Gallifrey uh, to a um, uh, uh, to a hilltop. Uh, 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 I, I think against the burnt orange sky and regenerates. Oh, I keep up! Bish! And then uh, uh, regenerates and it fades to white. Uh, uh, and then you hear laughter uh, uh, and you, uh, over the title. <laughs> uh, um because he couldn't give it to anybody else. He couldn't get anybody else to take it. He said he couldn't get anybody to take over. He found out, what, 24 hours, 48 hours before it was publicly released that uh, uh, Rusty Davis was coming back. Why do you think he was coming back? Right? Because he had really damaged his personal legacy. He had damaged Jody. Uh, yeah, da Jody Whittaker damaged himself. He had damaged David Tennant. He damaged Chris Eccleston. He damaged Billy Piper by having them associated with this awful, awful show. That's why he came back, and also I think he's going to make a lot of money. Make a lot of money, right? Uh, um, the original uh, RTD era was one of the absolute be uh, absolute favourites of the whole series, and I'm looking forward to seeing what RTD and Shooting Gat were choose to do with the character. I, I am as well. And, you know, this is why I'm happy, because we're... we're in, is it, oh, no, we've been... Still more to go. We're ending on a bit of hope, right? We are, and I, again... You're, you're welcome to have loved this era, right? And for you, it can remain as canon, as canon as you like. For me, it's a racing from my mind canon. 
I hope they don't reference back to it, right? I really hope they never reference back to this era. Uh, uh, um, because it just, it, every time I see it, I did a review of uh, uh, the Worlds of Wonder uh, uh, a, a exhibition. It looked excellent, right? Did it yesterday. Uh, it looked absolutely excellent. Every time we came across a Jodie era monster, like the dregs, I was like, oh, God, stop. It's like, it, it, it's like having a beautiful white cashmere sweater and you get a drop of black ink on it. The whole thing's ruined. You want to get rid of that. You want to just ignore that black, black ink. Um, but as we excitedly brace ourselves for a shining new era of the greatest show in the galaxy, uh, I hope uh, that the contribution that Chris Chibnall and Jodie Whittaker have made to this beloved show will not be pushed aside and forgotten by fans. It's being, look, it's happening now in real time, right? As you, as we're, as we're seeing, it's written, that's what's going on, right? As we see on the Neil Patrick Harris and Shooting Gartwa and David Tennant, Yasmin Finney, Catherine Tate, right? As we say, and we're all excited. We see the Wraith Warriors. We see Meet the Beep, right? And probably the Celestial Toy. Do you see the difference, right? Chris Jibble kept everything secret. Oh, no, let me, let me look at what I'm doing. Oh, no, let's keep it. Kept it all secret. Nobody gave a shit. Nobody cared. Nobody ever cared. Now uh, 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 it's all exciting, right? We are excited again, and it is pushed aside, and it is forgotten by fans. It's kind of like a uh, uh, like an albatross around it. We've got to get through this ninety minute piece of garbage before we can get back to Doctor Bloody Who again. Oh God, I hate it. To me, the thirteenth round was really enjoyable, and uh, honestly, again, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm jealous that you enjoyed it, right? I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm jealous you enjoyed it. Uh, uh, Shedding the over-the-top drama of the Moffat era, Chibnall created an era of the show that was fun, not for me, wondrous, not at all, and thoroughly enjoyable for you. Good, I'm glad. And hopefully for many other fans of the show, too. I, you know, I hope so, too. I hope a lot of people enjoyed this, right? I, I don't think that many, yeah, but I hope they did, right? Uh, I hope in the future we see plenty of comics, novels, and audio play. No, we're not. We're not, because you, know, the, the, you, you are in such a small uh, uh, minority. That there's, they're just not financially viable, right? We see this from the merchandise, how it's been decimated. It's just not financially viable. Most people, I mean, there's a lot of fans who just won't buy anything with the Jody logo on it. They just won't, right? Uh, um, I, I, look, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think so. Uh, I, I think we're going to get those two uh, Dr. Ruth sets. I think we're going to get those two... Uh, uh, master sets with uh, uh, such the one. I think they're probably going to be better than anything we saw in, in, in the Whitaker era. Uh, uh, but I don't think it's... I, maybe the master set will continue. Unless, uh, unless they're very good, right? From Unless they work out to be just incredible and people love them, then they're great. But I just don't see it happening. I don't see it happening. Stop Asian hate, right? This is such a... Uh, uh, see that little sign came up? That's such... It's so indicative of what was wrong with this era of Doctor Who. Uh, uh, yes, there was a spike in Asian hate crimes. They wanted... They, they, like everything, they wanted to say that was because of Donald Trump because uh, he said uh, Corona came from China. <laughs> it kind of did. That Wuhan lab, yeah, it did. Uh, 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 so that, oh, no, there's going to be Asian hate. No. The, the spike in Asian hate crimes, uh, we've talked from America came uh, 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 massively from the uh, lower-income black community. Why? Because they were told by all, uh, all these left-wing politicians that, you know, uh, 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 critical race theory is real. They can't, they're never going to succeed because they're black. But look at the, the agents. They're always going to succeed. Then they got a better deal with you. And so virtually all of the Asian hate crime is black on Asian. I think in the Bay Area, 78% of some ridiculous statistic like that of violent crimes, not hate crimes, violent crimes with black people attacking Asian people, right? That's such a great example of, where, of, of, of what the world that the Chimel Doctor came out of. Uh, I hope this user sees plenty of comics and audio plays set in the, uh, in the era of Doctor Who so we get to spend more time with 13 years of Gra uh, uh, Graham and Ryan. I think uh, Graham, Ryan and Dan, I think you're looking for fan fiction, mate. I think that, that's where you're going to be going. Uh, and I hope more than anything, one day, even the most hardcore Doctor Who fans will look back at the Zero Show and love it with, uh, with love and the fondness that I already have for it. I think that's unlikely, right? I think that's unlikely. Uh, listen, I think you put out a strong defense of the era, right? And I'm, I, again, I'm genuinely happy that you like it. I really am. I'm genuinely happy that you're excited for the new era of Doctor Who because we all can be excited about that, right? I, we're, we're all excited about that. I'm mostly, we're mostly excited about that. 
uh, uh, and maybe we can have a bit of unity, which will be lovely, which will be absolutely lovely. Uh, uh, but there you go. A, a, a look inside the mind of somebody uh, who really likes this era, who's a genuine fan. I, I, I can tell from your writing you uh, was a genuine fan. Uh, uh, vive la difference, baby. Vive la difference! My name is Fila Beck and the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. Yeah!